Have you ever wondered if the FPS boost guides that you follow actually works or is just a myth but you are too lazy to test it out yourself? Well, I have gone through and tested way too much of these FPS optimization tricks and compiled every single one of my findings such as game mode on or off, best power plan, even the infamous registry editor that people keep changing and breaking their system will be shown in this video. The test format that I use is quite unprofessional because I want to make it extremely simple for you guys to try it out as well. So no Riva tuner with 1% lows and such things like that. I went to practice mode with all of these options on and looked at this wall in T-Spawn Mirage. Using CL underscore show FPS 4, I can see my FPS counter. It fluctuates a lot and quite hard to see but again it's very simple to set up and you can see the general FPS that you are getting so it's good enough. At the start, I had about 180 FPS and after a few days of testing, I managed to get 300 FPS. There will be 3 levels to this and for each trick, I will let you know which works and which does not for me. First level is easy level. The tricks shown can be easily tested and if you don't like it, you can simply revert it back. Medium level, similar to the easy level but it's just slightly complicated. Finally, the third level is the advanced section where it is complicated to try and could potentially be dangerous as in your PC might not work properly if done incorrectly. Also, you can do a restore point but occasionally it doesn't work for me so I don't really trust it. Starting with the easy level, let's start off with the simplest and most obvious few. Closing all of the unnecessary apps by just simply clicking on the X button on the top right and also in the context menu down here, just right click the app and close it. This definitely works. You can also create a batch file to close every unimportant app right before playing a game and creating another batch file to open it back up once you're done playing. You can search it up online how to do it, it takes like 5 minutes to set it up. Disable startup apps. Go to task manager by searching it and disable the ones that you are not using. But the ones that you want to keep enabled, make sure to quit those apps before playing. Uninstalling unnecessary apps. I tried resetting my whole PC and tested my FPS on CS2 and also tested it after I installed everything such as Discord, OBS, things like that. There is no difference for me. Maybe because I'm using SSD, if you are using HDD or if you have only a few GB left in your storage drive, then it might help. Animated wallpaper such as wallpaper engine reduces FPS as well. If you have a second monitor, having an empty second monitor screen increases FPS depending on the app that is open. Just simply minimizing my OBS without closing it increases by 10 fps. For some reason, minimizing on the first screen doesn't increase it. Next is Windows settings. Go to the gaming tab, turn off Xbox game bar, no difference for me but might as well. As for game mode, you don't even need to restart CS2 to test it, just turn game mode on and note down the fps, minimize the game, turn off game mode and see if it increases or decreases for you. As for me, it increases my fps by around 10. Kinda ironic that game mode turn on lowers your fps. Another one is graphics settings. You can add the CS2 app inside and change it to high performance. It did not make any difference for me. Another interesting one is hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. Turn this off. Make sure to restart your PC after that. This increases my FPS by 20. The next window settings is privacy settings. Turning all the privacy settings off doesn't really do anything for me but it doesn't hurt to try. Go to privacy and settings and turn off all of this right here. General, speech, diagnostic and feedback, 10 optional diagnostic data, improve inking and typing, tailored experiences, view diagnostic data, feedback frequency, activity history, search permissions and search history on this device. As for the app permission section at the bottom, turn off anyone that you don't use such as location, voice activation, account info, calendar, phone calls, call history, email, tasks, messaging, radios and app diagnostics. NVIDIA setting. Right click on your desktop, click on show more options and then NVIDIA control panel. Go to manage 3D settings. Main ones would first be the low latency mode. If you have the NVIDIA reflex enable or enable plus boost, this setting won't really do anything because reflex will override these settings anyways. So best to leave it turned off to prevent any interference. Max frame rate off to ensure you are running at the highest FPS possible. Power management mode set to preferred 
offer maximum performance, preferred refresh rate set to highest available, shader cache size. This won't really increase your FPS but will help if you are experiencing micro stuttering. You can put this to 10 GB. Texture filtering quality, you can set it to high performance but I heard that it makes your game look worse but I don't really notice it. And finally, threaded optimization on. All of these settings increases my FPS by a whole 40 FPS so you can copy all of my other settings like so. Now go to configure surround physics. Changing it to either one doesn't make any difference to me but best to put it on your graphics card. As for stretch resolution players, go to adjust desktop size and position and change perform scaling on from GPU to display if it is possible. Apparently, it helps lessen input lag. As for the CS2 settings, thank you to Vu CSGO for this amazing guide. I will just be summarizing the FPS part of it. Boost player contrast, you can disable it because there is only a very slight difference, like a little bit of darkness at the side of the player model, which I'm not even sure if that actually helps in visibility or not. This will increase about 5 FPS. V-Sync, of course, leave it off. This just creates unnecessary input lag. Multi sampling anti-aliasing mode, leave it to none if using native resolution and to CMAA2 if using downscale resolution. Global shadow quality increases by 30 fps if set to low, however, having it to low will make you unable to see shadows at all, which in CS2, you are going to be in a very big disadvantage. I will show you how to set it to low while being able to still see the shadows in the medium level. Model texture detail, set this to medium, it gives 2 to 3 FPS boost and better visuals. Texture filtering mode. According to Vu, 16x anisotrophic actually increases FPS as compared to lower settings which is bilinear. I have tested it and I can't really notice a difference, so best is to put it to the highest settings for better visibility. Shader detail and particle detail set this both to low, doesn't change anything in the game. Ambient occlusion, disabling it will give maybe an extra 5 fps but it's not worth it because you will lose the advantage of seeing shadows on the wall. Leave it on at least medium. High dynamic range, there is no difference in terms of fps so best to set it to quality for better visibility. Fidelity fx, if you are playing on native resolution, you can try setting it to quality or balance. It will look only slightly worse but you might gain quite a bit of fps. For me, I got an increase of 20 fps but whenever I move my mouse, there is a little bit of graininess to it which distracts me so I left it on disable. However, if you are using a downscale resolution, you must have it on disable or the game would look extremely bad. Nvidia Reflex, there is no difference in terms of fps so I just leave it on enable because enable plus boost seems the best on stronger systems and I only have a mid tier PC. Make sure that you are playing on full screen and not full screen windowed under video settings here. This has increased my fps by 20. You can also try downscaling your resolution. This would only be affected if your system is GPU bottleneck and not CPU bottleneck. If it is your CPU issue, changing resolution won't do anything. If you don't understand what that means, I will explain it further in the medium section. For me, it increases it by another 20 fps by playing on 4x3 1280 960 stretch but I left it on native because I prefer it that way. Next settings would be under game settings, allow animated avatars, disable it. This definitely would work as there are less things going on in your screen but even if it doesn't, it definitely helps you focus better. Moving on to the comments, make sure that you have developer console enabled. First comment would be the FPS max. I have seen some people are saying put 0 or 999. There is no difference, just pick either one, it is the same. Another comment is this, engine underscore low underscore latency underscore sleep underscore after underscore client underscore tick that is way too much underscore but anyways some people say it might fix micro starters if you put it to true but if there is no issue in the first place it's best to leave it to false as you might feel your aim is worse there is no difference in fps for me on this and now we will look at the launch options if you are using an intel or amd gpu try dash vulcan however if you are using nvidia gpu like i am it will decrease your fps by a lot. For me, it decreased my FPS by 100 so I don't use it at all. The next one is dash threads. This is basically letting CS2 know how many threads to use simultaneously and to know what number to put right after. Go to task manager and click on the performance tab. You can see the amount of cores that you have then put it one more higher than that. In my case, I have 8 cores so I will put it to 9. Some apparently have some results on putting it one lower but I tried 7 threads, 8 threads and 9 threads there is not much difference on it. However, I do know that the threads command actually works because I tried three threads and it decreases my FPS by 50. 
Lastly, you can try dash high which is just to tell your system to put CS2 as a higher priority. This depends on your system. Apparently, some people got a lot more FPS using this. Some see no difference while some even experience their CS2 crashes sometimes due to instability. While you're here, you can go to the installed files and click on verify integrity of game files. This is just to ensure there is no corrupted files. For the last trick in the easy level, we're going to talk about the softwares. You can try timer resolution or ISL. C. Maybe it helps with input lag, but definitely not FPS. For FPS booster apps, they pretty much just disable the apps that you are using in the background and free up memory. It is not some kind of magic pill, so it's pretty much the same as closing down the applications yourself, so I personally don't recommend it. And that's all for the easy level, now we are going to move on to the medium level. Alright, as promised, this is how to set your shadow quality to low while being able to still see the shadows. Go to your C drive, then program files x86, steam, user data, and then to know your user data, go to steam and click on inventory then trade offers click on who can send me trade offers scroll down and open the folder that has this number as well after that go to 730 local cfg and finally the cs2 underscore video dot txt and set this enable shadow casting from 0 to 1 change the shadow texture width override to 2048 and shadow texture height override to 3072 barn light shadow map scale to 0.5 these three settings is to set the resolution of the shadows higher because if not it would look really pixelated which is not good this increases my fps by 10 instead of 30 if i just set it to low but it's still better than nothing Another thing you can try is going back to Steam, then Steam Apps, Common, Counter-Strike Global Offensive, Game, Bin, Win64. And right click on the EXE file of CS2, tick Disable Full Screen Optimization, click on Change High DPI Settings, and tick this and make sure it is on application. This increased my FPS by around 20 FPS but it makes alt tabbing a lot slower. Unsubscribing to workshop maps doesn't actually delete it from your system. It will only visually disappear in your CS2. So this is how to truly delete it. Go to C drive, program files 86, Steam, Steam apps, common, Counter-Strike Global Offensive, CSGO and then maps. I had this serve Luna file here which is most likely from playing on community servers but if you have more than that just delete it all. Make sure not to delete the others folders as well. And then the next one will be going into the workshop folder as well and this is where most of your workshop maps would be in. I only have 7 subscribed maps but for some reason I have 13 of it in this folder. So just simply delete it all. The third folder, just go back to the maps folder and then go to graphs and then workshop. You can delete all of this as well. Then the next time you open your subscribe workshop maps, it will just download that specific workshop maps back again. This increased my FPS by 10 but most of you probably have more than me so you will get a lot more than this. Speaking of deleting, there is another 3 more folders that you can delete. Press your windows key plus R and type prefetch. Just hit ctrl A, right click on it and delete all of it. If you see any pop up saying to retry, skip or cancel, just tick do this for all conflicts and click on skip. Next, percent tem percent, same thing just delete everything inside of it. And then the third folder would be temp, delete everything inside of it also. Make sure to empty your recycle bin after this. Some people even have like 30 GBs worth of junk in here and deleting it definitely helps. You can also delete more temporary files by searching for disk cleanup, select your C drive and click on cleanup system files, select your C drive again, click on OK, tick all of the boxes and click on OK. Another Windows plus R trick is typing MS config. Once this pops up, go to boot advanced options and tick the number of processes and change it to the highest available number that you can see. I have tried it ticked and unticked and there is no difference for me. The next one is power plan. If you have watched a lot of FPS guides, you must have seen this power plan constantly being mentioned which is the ultimate performance plan. To try it, open up your command prompt and run as administrator, then simply copy this under the description and paste it. Go to the power options page by searching it and click on show additional plans and finally ultimate performance plan. For me, it doesn't really help in terms of FPS. However, clicking on change plan settings and then change advanced power settings under processor power management, minimum processor state and maximum processor state, make sure that the maximum one is set to 100%. Changing to 100% will make my CPU run faster but it doesn't increase my FPS. Most probably because my GPU is bottlenecking my PC performance. If you remember in the easy level, I did mention the 
word bottleneck, it just pretty much means it is a component that limits the potential of other hardware because of its capabilities. In simpler terms, my trash GPU prevents my CPU from running faster. However, it is still good to change it to 100% to squeeze out the maximum performance of your PC. Speaking of command prompt, you can also type in these two commands, SFC slash scan now, and wait for it to be done scanning, and then type in another command which is DISM slash online slash cleanup dash image slash restore health. Both of these will also be in the description. It basically checks for error on your PC and restore it back to normal. Moving games to the C drive. I don't really notice a difference in FPS, but I think it will help on the loading time of the game. If you want to move it, click on Steam at the top left, go to settings, storage, and click on CS2. Then click on move. If the move button is grayed out like mine, make sure to add the C drive at the top. And that is all for the medium level. Again, if you are a careless person or a casual user, I would suggest to just watch it and not follow along to prevent any damages in your PC. First, it will be disabling simultaneous multi-threading or SMT for short in your BIOS. Every motherboard is different. You have to search your own one on how to turn it off, but it should be under the CPU section. Some people has reported over 50% increase on FPS, but for my testing, it doesn't really increase my FPS at all, but it makes my computer feel slower. Second one would be clean installing a debloated NVIDIA driver. I followed the video made by Furious for this part. You can watch it for more details on it, but basically, you use the program called DDU, which stands for Display Driver Uninstaller, to uninstall your NVIDIA driver. Then, use NV Clean Stall to install the debloated driver, specifically the version 537.42 and then disable a few features for the driver then install it. There is also the NVIDIA Profile Inspector which is basically the advanced version of NVIDIA settings and you can use it to import optimized CS2 profile. Both of these didn't really make any difference for me. I've seen a lot of people say that they have to reset their whole PC because of this. I don't know how is it possible to mess it up that badly but a lot of people did and that's why it's in the advanced section. Also, another ready thread did say that newer version apparently helped with FPS. For those of you that want the easiest way to get the newest version of your NVIDIA driver, just download GeForce Experience and it will let you know whenever there is a new driver. Or if you want to just download the driver manually, go over to the NVIDIA website and enter your GPU, then search and download the latest version. I tried downloading the latest NVIDIA driver version as of today, which is 546.33. Both the debloated driver and the newest version gives me the the same exact FPS. Now we move on to the registry editor. This is the part where most people messed up because they didn't follow the instructions properly. Personally, all this didn't change anything for me, but it does make my PC feels faster. Might be placebo though, so try it at your own risk. Windows key plus R and type reg edit. Then just simply copy this in the description and paste it on top or go here yourself. H key underscore local underscore machine software, Microsoft, Windows NT, current version, multimedia system profile. Double click network throttling index and change it to 8 Fs. F F F. F, 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 F. Make sure it is on hexadecimal. Some say to put in 8 Fs and some even say to put 7 Fs. Not sure which one is the right one, but I just put it to 8. Double click system responsiveness and change it to 0. Hexadecimal as well. Next one, just click on task and then game. Change GPU priority to 8 hexadecimal, priority to 6 hexadecimal, scheduling category to high, make sure H is capital and SFIO priority to high as well. Make sure H is capital. Finally, the last part is of course upgrading your PC specs either by overclocking or simply buying a better one. Now, I can't tell you exactly which part that you need to upgrade. However, I can show you how to see which is the bottleneck. Go to Task Manager and go to the Performance tab. Then make sure that you have your game on and play some kind of mode and focus on the CPU and GPU section. If you see your GPU is running below 80% and CPU is running at 100%, the CPU needs to be overclocked or replaced. Even sometimes when CPU is running only at about 20%, it could also be due to the speed of which the CPU is running at that prevents the GPU from running its full potential. Second scenario is if you see GPU is running at 100% and CPU is running low, the GPU needs to be overclocked or replaced. But if you see both CPU and GPU is running low, 
then it could potentially be your RAM that requires overclocking or upgraded. It's not just the size that matters, but also the speed at which it is running at. There is also the timings of the RAM, but that is way too advanced for the purpose of this video. My personal experience is that I overclocked my single stick 16GB DDR4 RAM from running at 2666MHz to 3200MHz. It did increase it by 20fps, but I still had the same issue where the CPU and GPU is still running low. So I have to add another 16GB stick and immediately it doubled my FPS from about 100FPS to 180FPS, which is where I started the testing at for this video. So yeah, in the end, my FPS has increased from 180FPS all the way to 300FPS. I will also categorize the ones that definitely increased my FPS and the ones that I'm unsure of in the description below. Try it out and let me know how it goes for you down in the comments below. Like and subscribe if it did actually help you even just a little. The video shown here is what YouTube actually thinks you will enjoy.